Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. eugenics tree right here. Who remembers what the term eugenics means? Raise your hand. Let me hear you. Anybody? What does the term eugenics mean? It means good genes. Good genes, right. Good birth, good genes. Very good. Okay, write that down. Good genes, good birth. And it's referring to European genia genes, not black or Latino genes, not us. Can we see the roots? Uh, Eli, Enoch, I mean, who's Eli? I call somebody Eli. Oh, Forget it. That's Ian. I'm sorry. My mind went somewhere. All right. I want you to look. All these things work together for the betterment, betterment of the white establishment or Edomite establishment. And they all these roots work against blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. On the far, let me look. Y'all see underneath, you see the word genetics. And right next to genetics, you got psychology. Psychology, you got mental testing. Uh, where's and on my far right, it says sociology. So what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about sociology, we're going to talk about mental testing, and we're going to talk about psychology. Today's class, what's the name of today's class? Secret plots against black people. When I say black people, I'm putting all 12 tribes together because it's too much to say. Blacks, and Hispanics, and Native American. It's a whole paragraph. So I'm going to just abbreviate it and say blacks. Secret plots. I want to open up with a video. Many of you may have not seen this video. And it's not a shocking video. It's kind of boring, but I'm going to show you something. Give me operant condition Skinner box. How many of you know about the Skinner box? Nobody, nobody. Who raised their hand over here? You heard of it before. Okay. All right. This guy, this guy right here, B.F. Skinner is his name. Now, it's a video. It's only four minutes. I want, I want you all to pay attention to what's being said. He's the guy that created the box with the mouse in it, where the mouse would uh, push a lever and food comes out, and after a while, uh, he would change it and put a shock under the mouse if he did something he didn't want the mouse to do. Right, he did it with a dog too. They use these the same things with lions and tigers and elephants. How they're able to control behavior. Now you might be asking yourself, what the hell has this got to do with us? It has everything to do with us. Everything. Roll the tape. Skinner in the mid 20th century inherited the mantle of the father figure of behavioralism from Watson. He believed that we can both predict and thus control behavior. Thus, so notice what it says. We can predict and control behavior. And they use animals to experiment on. I'm going to say it again. They can predict behavior and control your behavior based on the use of animals. His name is B.F. Skinner. Go ahead. 
affecting the environment, we can change the individual. And he firmly believed that by manipulating the environment in the right way, in a thoughtful manner, we can change individuals for the better. Inspired by the work of Thorndike and his law and effect, he devised the learning theory, operant conditioning, which can be defined as a learning process in which the consequences, which follow a response, determine the likelihood that the behaviour will be repeated in the future. So behaviour is strengthened when it's been reinforced, therefore more likely to recur. And behaviour is weakened when it's been punished, less likely to occur. So pause right there. So they have good behaviours where you get rewarded with, and then they have negative behaviours where you get punished with. And they use an example of this is called the Skinner box with a mouse. Roll on. So Skinner devised the Skinner box to identify how the consequences of actions affected future behaviour. So in terms of some of the key aspects of the Skinner box, it contained a lever that was used for both positive and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement in the, in the form of food was delivered through a food dispenser after lever pressing. Pause there it. Was an so if the mouse pressed the lever, which he wanted him to do, it would dispense food. The food would be the treat it, the mouse would get. That's the reward. There was an electric grid on the floor that would deliver painful electric current. There was a light that went flashed was a warning signal to the rat that the electric current was about to come. Pause. So if the rat did something he didn't want it to do, the red light would come on and shock the rat. They were training, to, training the rat what to push to get a reward and what not to do to avoid getting shocked, punished. Go ahead. So in order to provide motivation for behavior, Skinner used hungry rats that were placed in his Skinner box. And much like the cats in Thorndike's puzzle box, initially the beha their behaviour was random. Pause. Until they inadvertently... There was another guy that worked with him named Thorn Thorndike. They called it the Thorndike puzzle box, which was very similar to this. Go ahead. Hit the lever, which resulted in the immediate rewarding of a food pellet. Now, it didn't take the, long, the rats long to learn that lever pressing resulted in the positive outcome of receiving a food reinforcer. So therefore, the consequence of receiving food, which was the desirable stimulus, ensured that the lever pressing behaviour would be repeated again. This is positive reinforcement. Now initially, Skinner used a continuous reinforcement schedule, which results in the fastest rate of acquisition, i.e. every time the rat hit the lever, a food pellet would be delivered. Then, later on, he went to a partial schedule, and I'll go through this in a future YouTube clip. And as stated earlier, the Skinner box was also used for negative reinforcement. So the rat was subjected to an aversive stimulus, an unpleasant electric current, and again, the random act of lever pressing switched off the electric current. So the consequence of escaping the electric current, the aversive stimulus, ensured that the behaviour would be repeated, i.e. lever pressing. Later on, Skinner would switch on the signal light just prior to turning on the electric current. And again, the rat fairly quickly learned the association between the light and the electric current and the lever pressing. So the light would be switched on the rat would rapidly hit the lever to remove that aversive stimulus. That is, the behaviour of lever pressing had been reinforced. Okay, so we got the, the pause it right there. Let me see something. Okay, we got the idea. Give me, everybody understands so far what we're going with, the Skinner box. Give me the next article, why B.F. Skinner is the most dangerous man in the world. Why B.F. Skinner may have been the most dangerous psychologist ever. Now, what I want to do is a very long article, so I want to go all the way to the bottom. Read from here, Officer Ozias. 
Give me a child and I'll shape him into anything. He says, give me a child, a human being, and I can shape him into anything. You might ask yourself, how did we go from grace and power to the level we are called today, niggas and spicks? Mm. How did we fall so low? You're going to find out that this eugenics guy with his psychology, he's able to manipulate blacks and Latinos to do whatever he wanted. And they used his understanding to manipulate us. Keep going. In addition to setting aside science that would do much to complement his work, Skinner also dabbed in some dabbled, dabbled dabbled in some suspect politics and sociology. See, it says he dabbled in some suspect politics and sociology. That's why I had him on the tree. I said, read that word sociology, meaning how society can control people and manipulate people. Go ahead. Given his benign totalitarian learnings, we can benign be... Benign totalitarian. Totalitarian is somebody that's in charge. Benign is like... Um, Pat, yeah. Or... Benign. Yes, non-threatening. Yeah, Something non -threatening. passive. Go ahead. Given his benign tot totalitarian learnings, we can be... Leanings. 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 We could be thankful that he never took office or found himself in a position where he could apply his self-described technology on the masses. Oh, but guess what, what, what happened? They took his technology, and they did use it on the masses. Go ahead. This is a book he put together. It says, if you plan to read only one book this year, this is probably the one you should choose. New York Times, Beyond Freedom and Dignity, B.F. Skinner. We can no longer afford freedom, says B.F. Skinner. Go ahead. The most influential and... No, 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 come on, come on. Indeed, Skinner's thinking was quite distant from what's regarded as humanistic psychology. Just take the title of his 1971 book, for example, Beyond Freedom and Dignity. In it, he made the case that behavioral psychology could solve all the world's problems, but he doubted that people would ever have the inclination to use this tool. Earlier, Skinner's 1948 novel, Walden to Envisage, uh, Envisage. Envisage, Envisage Utopian Societies or Intentional Communities Resulting from Tightly Controlled Systems in Which People Were Motivated Solely by the Manipulation of Positive and Negative Reinforcements. It's an idea early, eerily reminiscent of the Soviet Union's use of psychiatry to suppress political dis dissent. Indeed, the notion of conditioning the population to conform to a predetermined set of behavioral standards is an undeniably dystopian notion, which all leads to another fundamental problem intrinsic to Skinner's radical behaviorism. Not all psycho psychological conditions or states of mind can or should be conditioned. Take autism, for example. Many people in the autistic rights movement argue that the most common therapies for autism are unethical. Abuse, even indeed, therapists sometimes... Abusive, even oh. indeed, therapists sometimes use aversion therapy, including shock therapy and restraints when trying to condition or train children out of their autism. Okay, I want to end that there. Uh, put up the picture of the lion. There's a lion and a, uh, a tiger and an elephant. You got to ask yourself, how were they able to train a ferocious tiger to jump through a fiery hoop? And you know the tiger's afraid of fire. But they managed to train this thing to jump through fire, to jump through a hoop. Give me the next one of the elephant. How would they get these elephants to stand on top of each other's back and do these stupid tricks? It's called operant conditioning. They're shock therapy. They're able to train animals to do what they want. They use the same psychology on blacks and Latinos on another level. You may say, I don't get shocked. What do you mean they shock? Oh, they do shock us. They do. So now, thank you, uh, Noah. Thank you. The idea concept was used on both elephants and tigers in a zoo. Um, you get a positive uh, action. For if, uh, like food, for example, we talked about the pellet reward, or a negative. If you do something bad, you get electric shock 
or something of that nature. They do the same thing with blacks and Latinos, where we get rewarded for doing something they want us to do, and we get punished if we do something they don't want us to do. Now you will see the treatment of God. We are not black men, we are Israelites. Shalom, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.